What's up everybody? Welcome back to Krebs Block Racing. Today is all about engine management and power distribution on the Evo 9 here. This car is running on a Haltech Nexus R5 vehicle control unit, which is a PDM and ECU integrated into one. It's also running on the stock ABS system, and we have the stock all-wheel drive system running as well. Now, I didn't know anything about wiring when I started this project, and I need to thank MA Performance, uh, DMN Racing, Professional Awesome Racing, RS Motors, and Sandback Race Development for all of the questions that they had to answer for me because I didn't know anything, like literally nothing. Didn't know what a, a relay was, had no idea what five volt was or if it was even a thing. So a lot of questions had to be answered and it took me a long time to get started with this. And I also need to thank Haltech. Um, without their system, their software integrated with their ECU and their Flying Lee harness, this car probably would have never ran. So we're gonna go through, we'll jump in the driver's seat, show you guys all the features that we have and then we'll get into some of the details of how we made everything work and how all the wires ran in the car. I'll give you guys a quick tour of the office. We have the key on for ignition still, or for power on. And we have a 15 button uh, can keypad for our starter. Uh, you can set it up a few different ways, but I just have it to push and hold to start. We also have our turn signals. Uh, lights and high and low boost and a few other things on there. I have my ACD buttons here. Or these aren't the buttons, these are actually just the lights. Uh, they're usually in the inside the Mitsubishi dash. So we had to change them to LED lights here. Have our button on the left side so we can change from our different modes between tarmac gravel and snow. And how I know if there's a fault, all three of these lights will be on at the same time. So that let me know that something's not working in the system. A little lower we have the ABS light, that will be on if I'm having a problem. So if there's a wheel speed sensor that's off or something's broken, that will show me that the ABS isn't working. That way I can be conscious of it on track. For a dash, we're running the Haltech IC7 dash. It's a 7 inch screen, which fits perfectly between the wheel as you can see. There's a bunch of different configurations you can do on here. Multiple pages, you can change colors, uh, change every gauge. You can set up different warning lights for everything. Uh, you just need to set your max and mins on that stuff. I usually use uh, the second page, oil temp, coolant temp, and a bunch of other stuff on here. You can also set your tack to however you want. So if you want your red line to be at 8,000 or you want your max to be 10 or nine, you set it however you want. It's also dimming. We have our buttons over here on the left side so you can dim it up or down. Buttons are super easy to find and push if you're wearing racing gloves or anything like that. Pretty happy with that. For data logging and lap times, I'm using an AIM Solo 2. Uh, it was the cheapest option for me since I already had one, so it just wires into the can port on the Nexus. One feature that I did add is an Evo 10 pedal. So this is a drive-by-wire pedal, and we also have a Audi R8 drive-by-wire throttle body. So this allows me to run auto blip on downshifts and also full throttle shifts. So I have a have a switch on the brake and a switch on the clutch. So if the ECU recognizes that the brake is pushed in and then the clutch is pushed in, as soon as the clutch is pushed in, it'll give it just a little blip of throttle. So I won't have to try to heel toe and lose a little bit in the braking zones. And I also have it set up for full throttle shifts. So if the, if the gas pedal is pushed all the way down, and it notices that the clutch is pushed, it'll give it an ignition cut. That does it for the driver's seat, so I'll show you guys some of the wiring we have. Uh, this was all really nice and tucked before, but a year ago I decided to put a front cage and get rid of all the interior in here, so it's a little messy. We have the battery that was mounted behind the driver's seat, or passenger seat. Some loose wires here that were extra. This is all the five volt and 12 volt and grounds. We have the Nexus mounted here on the floor and the main wiring harness kind of going up through the stock location uh, using some Haltech wiring and their firewall boot. We have another harness going towards the back. This is for the tail lights, um, also for the ACD pump and a few other things, sensors back there. Then we have another line going back through here, through the middle. This is for the fuel pump and the fuel level sensor. One more little harness we have is going up into the cowl. That's for the headlights and turn signals. Up here is the ACD computer, and that needs to see 
uh, quite a few sensors. If you look around the car, a couple of them go back to the ACD pump and a pressure switch. And then there's also the relay for the ACD system itself with the power. It needs to see these two G sensors right here in the center of the car. There's longitude and latitude G sensors. And it also needs to see, there's a steering wheel sensor right here that measures steering angle. It needs to see that as well. One of the things I wanted to take care of was weight savings up front. Uh, Evo is basically a front wheel drive car with all wheel drive added on to the rear of it. So if you look at the center line of the wheel, it's actually behind the engine. So it's very front heavy. So anything up here that I can move to the back, I tried to do that. There's uh, most of the stock wiring, the fuse box and everything is actually underneath the dash right by the driver's feet, which is a bad spot to have any weight. That's the heaviest part of the car where the driver is. The main harness actually came through the fender here and ends up the fuse box for the engine compartment is right here too along with the battery so we were able to move all of that back over to where the ECU is and then relocate the battery back to help with weight distribution. Uh, we also removed the power steering which is right up here uh, probably 15 pounds worth of power steering and stuff in lines. We relocated that to the passenger compartment. This is an Opel Astra, I believe, power steering pump. I had a custom line made locally here, and all it needs is just a power and ground and then two 12 volt switches to turn the power steering on. It works works great for road course and everything driving around, but for autocross, it, it struggles with quick turns just a little bit. You kind of get caught every once in a while if you're really trying to go back and forth. And in the trunk, we have the ACD pump mounted. Now there's a pressure sensor switch our pressure sensor right here, I believe, that it needs to see. We actually had a problem with that when we had a bad sensor and all had all three lights on the ACD system. So once we changed that out, it finally started working and we got ACD back. Like I said before, the wiring comes through the stock location kind of behind the motor and we split it into two different areas. So one comes over to the left here, that goes to our alternator, a knock sensor, crank sensor. We have our fuel temp and pressure, comes to our coils here and our injectors. I got these a little bit different style connectors. They don't have the little pins on them. They have, just have little ears on the side. They come out a little bit easier. It also comes over to the oil pump, our oil pressure and temp. The second part of the harness kind of comes to the right underneath the throttle body. That feeds our uh, throttle body, our cam sensors, both of them. Our vehicle speed sensor is down on the transmission underneath there. Our coolant temp is right here on the back of the housing. IAT sensor, and then our boost control solenoid over here on the right. One thing I don't want to leave out is grounds. So make sure you have plenty of grounds going from the engine to the frame. We have one here on the passenger side, one back here on the intake manifold, and then we also have one down on the transmission. The ABS is also located right here. So right underneath there is where the ABS harness comes in and goes to the different uh, vehicle speed sensors and communicates with all the other sensors it needs. So how do you get started with a complicated project like wiring an entire car? Well, luckily the guys at SRD came over and we wrote down every single thing that we needed for the car. Everything to run it from outputs and inputs to features and functions. Anything that you want in the car, you have to figure out that system. The trigger system, you need to figure out how that works. Uh, the drive-by wire, anything that you want to add, you need to figure that out beforehand and figure out if the ECU that you're using is capable of uh, running that feature. So after we wrote everything down, we went into the Nexus software and filled everything out, which made it a lot simpler for me to understand. This is the NSP software. All you have to do is select these on the left side, these main menus. And they have drop downs for everything. So we'll select our engine configuration and you need to select everything. All this program knows is that I'm running a four cylinder engine. So every single part of the engine, every part of the electrical system, you need to input and tell the computer what to do. So this is a 2.2 liter four stroke, four cylinder. You can enter in your firing order and Haltac will kind of input that stuff into other parts of the calibration. It'll automatically select your fuel system wiring. So we have our four injector wires here along with our ignition system as our 25 amp power output for the coil packs and then our four ignition outputs. Get into some sensors. Select the main menu and you can select all the sensors that you're going to run and just go through each one one by one. So let's select our oil pressure. 
You need to download your calibration for what sensor you're actually using. You can set your minimum pressure at different RPMs, minimum and maximum warnings. And you can also set up your safeties through here and your wiring. So when you go in and select your wiring, this one's using the AVI 9, then you can go in and edit and select any available wire for that. Fuel and ignition tuning in here, you just select all your modes for that. These are all the engine functions that you can select. Again, select everything you need. Let's say we're going to go into a fan and select when it will enable and disable at what temperatures. And you select your wiring, you need to use a 25 amp output, so that's one of the four that you can use for the thermal fan. Select all your electrical, have our engine control relay, engine starter, headlights, taillights, that type of stuff. All you need to go in is select and figure out your wiring. So I have an 8 amp output for that. Our engine starter control is right here, so you can select your start stop button. And mine's just set up as momentary, as long as you hold it and the wiring is on the CAN keypad, button number one. Any generic stuff that you want, like a cigarette lighter or a horn, you can select those. Go in and select which wire you want to use, what output, and then your different connections. So these would be your CAN outputs and inputs. This is for the CAN keypad and the Halpec dash. As you can see, this is pretty simple to use. I went through this probably 15 times before I even started wiring the car just to get familiar with it so I could easily change stuff and kind of know what's going on with the calibration. After you're done going through the entire program and selecting all your wires, the coolest thing about this program is you can go up top to setup, your IO report, and this will give you a list of all of the wires that you have assigned to everything. So all you need to do is print this off to take it over to the shop and then you can do your available ones too. Uh, print this off and you can disconnect and depin all of these from the harness that you're not using. Here we have our Nexus VCU, a few sensors, the flying lead harness, can keypad, dash, uh, boot kit, and then also some more wiring supplies. This is the harness all laid out on the table. We basically took each wire and separated each one out, pulled them all together and labeled them with a label maker. And then we grouped them together, all the wires that were going to the same area, so it was easier to install, and then taped them all up and brought them over to the car. Now at some point everybody's car is going to look just like this and it's pretty disheartening, pretty frustrating, but all you need to do is keep on working, figure out one wire at a time and you will be able to get through it. This was the worst my car looked and as you can see it was quite a mess. Most of this is the ACD and ABS system with the Nexus underneath there, but just one by one, figure out each wire, keep on going and sooner or later your car is going to run. This is a few weeks after the first picture so you can see we have everything nicely tucked up underneath the dash. Uh, the rear harness going underneath the door sill here. Everything looking pretty nice and neat and ready for first fire up. This was the most difficult part of the build. This is the ACD and ABS wiring diagram. I got this off of Mitchell Repair. Just used a monthly subscription. So over on the left we have the ACD, ECU. On the right we have the ABS. Across the top these are all the fuses that the stock car has. And we just used the 12 volt switch. These don't need a lot of power. Use the 12 volt switch from the Nexus to power the ACD switch, steering angle sensor, all wheel drive ECU, the ACD pump, another one for the all wheel drive ECU, and the G sensors. And then on the bottom is all of the sensors. So we need all of the wheel speeds, pressure for the ACD pump, uh, throttle position. You actually need to tap into the Evo 10 pedal and find the zero to five volt wire and wire that in steering angle sensor, parking brake, and the ACD change mode, or the, the ACD switch. And then we also have the three lights. These are for the gravel, snow, and tarmac that I wired into the dash. There's another wiring diagram for just the ABS, which needs a few more things that aren't on the other wiring diagram. This is the engine diagram. I mainly use this just for a few of the stock sensors that we use, like the two cam sensors up on top and a few other things and we also have the power distribution this is for the analog brake system uh, some of the headlight stuff so I could figure out which wires were which 
This is for the alternator and starter. So I can figure out how you need to wire these. You actually need to run a resistor on the alternator so it knows that it needs to charge along with the starter. This is Mike Puglisi is doing right here. This is the stock fuel level sensor. So there's actually two of them in the tank. And this is the calibration that you need to use. To, so you need to enter all these values into the Haltech. And this is how we wired it up. There's a little resistor on there too. So ECU to resistor, goes to the secondary level and then goes to ground. You need a five volt sensor in there as well. And here's all the wiring for our turbo speed sensors coil packs, and temp and pressure sensors. As you guys can see, this is a very complex project. Uh, took a lot of time, about six months in total, six, seven months to complete the entire project. But in the end, we were able to shave some weight off, move some around into the right areas. Uh, gained a lot of safeties with the Haltech. Uh, gained a lot of tuning capability, added some functions, and overall just increased the performance of the car. Again, I need to thank Haltech for all of their help and support throughout the entire project. If you guys have any questions, please Put them in the comments. We'll see you guys next time.